MBA 633 Excel Tutorial 5 prepared by Professor Ahmed Tata, School of Management, George Mason University. In this tutorial, we are again going to see how to represent the association between two variables, but this time uh, the variables, either one or both, will not be ratio scale. Remember in tutorial 4, we saw the one way to represent the relationship between two variables and that was called a scattergram but it only worked when both variables were quantitative and ratio scale. So we are using a different worksheet here. It's the restaurant worksheet that came with your data set also with your textbook. Here we have a list of 300 restaurants. If you scroll down you will see that there are 300 rows, 300 restaurants. And for each restaurant we have a quality rating presumably given by uh, food critics and the average meal price uh, at the restaurant. And one would normally expect that if the um, quality rating is higher, the meal price would be somewhat higher as well. So going in, if you think about the two variables, quality rating and meal price, one would expect some kind of a relationship, although not a perfect one. There would be excellent restaurants whose meal prices are relatively low and there might be good restaurants whose meal prices are relatively high. So the association would not be perfect, but some sort of association might be expected, is reasonable to expect. But notice that of the two variables, only meal price is ratio scaled and quantitative. Quality rating is not. Okay, it's an ordinal variable, it's not ratio scaled. So we cannot use a scattergram to represent the relationship. So the technique that we are about to uh, learn is something called cross tabulation. It's a little more complex to execute than a scattergram, but it's more powerful in the sense that you can use it to represent the relationship between two variables when both are quantitative, uh, when both are ca <coughs> categorical, ordinal, or, uh, or, or you have a mixture. Okay, so it is much more powerful in that sense. So uh, <coughs> in Excel, a cross tabulation is called a pivot table. So uh, we start out by going to the insert option in the uh, uh, tabs and then picking pivot table. So we're about to insert a pivot table, which is what Excel calls a cross tabulation. So it'll, it'll look like a table and on the rows you will have the quality rating and on the columns you will have the meal prices and in, inside you will have a count of the number of restaurants that fall into each quality and meal price uh, pair uh, category, okay? So if you look at the inputs that you have to provide, it says select a table or range. Where is your input data? So I'm going to highlight the entire range, the three columns here, and I'm making sure that I pick up the labels for the columns as well. So uh, <coughs> shift and down arrow, right arrow, right arrow. There's just a shorthand way of highlighting all the uh, cells. So I've got the entire data set uh, highlighted here and I want the output to show up in a new worksheet rather than in the existing one and cluttering things up here. So I click OK and uh, Excel brings me to a new worksheet with along with a dialog box that I will use to set up the cross tabulation. So before I do the mechanics, let's uh, take a look visually at what is supposed to result. I'm trying to create a table, okay? The, and in the table, the rows will have the quality ratings, good, very good, excellent, bad, so forth, of restaurants. On the, along the columns, we'll have buckets of prices, let's say $10 to $15, $16 to $20, and so forth. And inside over here, you'll have a count of restaurants, okay? So um, each value in the middle over here will tell you how many restaurants fall into that particular category. So um, <clears throat> let's start building the table, the pivot table or the cross tabulation. So here is where we're going to build, start building. Um, here we're going to specify what are the rows, here we're going to specify what are the columns, and then the count will be specified over here. So these are the different pieces of the table. So since I wanted the um, quality rating to be the rows, you could have made them the columns as well. So I'm going to take quality rating and drag it down to the row label. 
okay as soon as I do that notice that over here Excel has already started building the cross tabulation so it says okay you have three values uh, for quality ratings the restaurants are either good very good or excellent and nobody's going to take a, a chance and say we call a restaurant bad so I suppose good means it's a bad restaurant but anyway those are the three ratings mm. so the quality rating is on the rows and along the columns we'll have the meal price okay so there you have the column now notice one thing interesting the meal prices are not yet bucketed just the individual meal prices uh, that show up for the 300 restaurants are listed here and we will see how to create the buckets in just a few minutes okay um, so over here we want to create a count of the number of restaurants that fall into each category so I take restaurant this is the index for the restaurants and I drag it down over here okay now you get some strange values over here and that's because the default statistical computation that's being done is they're summing the values of the restaurant so if you have restaurant number 10 and restaurant number 12 in a particular bucket it adds it up as restaurant number 22 which obviously doesn't make sense I don't want a sum of restaurants I want a count so I have to override the default computation over here to do that I click on the drop down menu and I go to value field settings and pick count okay I click OK and now now how do I interpret these numbers when I look at this number 5 over here that means out of these 300 restaurants in my data set there are five restaurants that are classified as good and whose meal price is $17 okay so now there are too many prices over here for me to make sense so I need to bucket the prices and that's usually what you need to do with ratio scale variables anyways you need to bucket them just as we saw with histograms otherwise you just get too many buckets okay all right so I put my cursor over here which is the prices for the restaurant meals I right click on it and I say I want to group I want to bucket the data and then Excel comes back and says well the lowest value for meal price that you have is ten dollars and the highest is 48 how do you want to bucket them and I say well okay since the highest price is 48 I will bucket up to 50 by 10 in other words I'm setting up five buckets now you may think that five buckets is too few or too many and that's something you can um, change of course okay so I'll just click OK and I got my buckets over here uh, let me just uh, okay so I just right align this so it looks nice all right so I have one two three four buckets here mm, 10 to 19 20 to 29 30 39 40 to 50 okay all right <clears throat> so here's my cross tabulation final result and again how do I interpret the numbers if I look at this number 42 it means of my 300 restaurants there are 42 restaurants that are classified as good and whose price falls in the 10 to 19 dollar bucket okay similarly there are two restaurants whose which are categorized good and whose prices fall in the 30 to 39 dollar range now um, if you notice that the prices are in increasing order 10 to 19 20 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 50 which is all very nice but if you look at the row labels the ratings these are ordinal variables they are they have a certain order to them and they're not in order you have excellent good very good so it would be nice if I move this row up okay so I right click over here and I go to move Oops, um, I move and I move very good up <coughs> the row so now I have the rows in order excellent very good good the reason I did that is now I have a basis for interpreting these numbers in the cross tabulation clearly if there is a very strong relationship between the restaurant rating and the price then I would expect most of the numbers to lie along the diagonal in other words uh, there should be a lot of restaurants that are rated good which have low prices a 
a lot of restaurants that are labeled excellent that should have high prices and in between. So most of the values counts should lie along the diagonal. There should be relative, the values of the diagonal should be relatively low, okay? If I don't see that pattern, then there is not a strong relationship between the two variables. Similarly, if the relationship was negative, if I had put good on top, followed by very good and then excellent, I would expect a downward sloping uh, set of values, namely along the right sloping, uh, uh, downward sloping diagonal. So basically, just like in scattergram, you're looking for patterns that lie along the 45 degree line, either sloping upwards or downwards. Similarly, here in a cross tabulation, we look for values that sort of lie, counts that lie along the diagonal as far as possible, and any values that are off the diagonal uh, are relatively low. If you see that pattern, then you can tell that there is a strong relationship between the two variables. If you see fairly high counts off the diagonal, then the relationship is weaker. So remember, the uh, uh, cross tabulation is another way to show the rep uh, relationship between two variables. The strength is that it can be used when uh, variables uh, are, are not ratio scale, that they're ordinal um, uh, also, okay? Uh, categorical variable instead of both being ratio scale like you had for, uh, for scattergrams. Uh, but it's a little more complex to execute.